George R. R. Martin's popularity as a writer blew up after Game of Thrones. Many like me only dove into the source material somewhere between the first and fourth season, because it never was a fantasy series of this quality on television ever. The characters, story, world, all gripping stuff. We are five books into the A Song of Ice and Fire series out of the seven that HBO, with Martin's help, adapted. It's been over a decade, and the last two books are still in the works. We gotta look somewhere else now. So if a man is capable of creating something this masterful, what else has he done in his colorful life? I'm gonna try and be as useful as I can here, cause lists online are very overwhelming and even misleading. Cause after Game of Thrones' success, attaching his name to anything was like printing money. He's in his 70s now, and he's been a professional writer for all of his adult life. Not always novels though. He started selling short stories to whoever would take them, and teaching. But he spent a large portion of his life screenwriting and developing shows. I'm not going to talk about all that stuff, because those are all collaborative efforts. This is all about the main man Martin, and what his mind has cooked up. Whenever he had the time, novels were his thing. He's written a lot more short stories, yes, but that was just his way of getting his foot in the door, making a name for himself, and getting some money. I wanted to discuss this for a long time now, but just now got the motivation after one of my recent videos about personal sigils, where I was reminded about the one Martin had made for himself in one of his short stories. His sigil depicts four novels he wrote long before his big epic, A Song of Ice and Fire. Four that must mean something important to him. The top icon, a sun surrounded by smaller stars, represents the first novel he was able to publish in 1977, Dying of the Light. A science fiction novel in deep space all about a planet belonging to no solar system, perpetually stuck in darkness. But finally, it'll get close enough to a constellation that'll bring light to this dark world. The constellation called the Wheel of Fire. The center of the formation was the red supergiant, the hub, the hell eye, fat satan, it had a dozen names. In orbit around it, arrayed neatly like six marbles of yellow flame rolling around a single groove, were the others, Satan's children. Before Song of Ice and Fire, Martin was mostly a science fiction author, and Dying of the Light kicked off his dream to becoming a full-time novelist. I only recently checked out this book, and damn, 29-year-old Martin's writing style was different. In his other works, I can pinpoint some moments where you could tell it's Martin's work, but not Dying of the Light. Not that it was a bad read, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Just lacked originality, borrowing heavily from Dune that came out a decade prior, like a lot of science fiction works that deal with futuristic space travel. I guess every author just worships Frank Herbert. Didn't really fall in love with any of the characters either, they all kind of lacked character. Still a fun premise, and a fun read. The red bat icon on the left represents Fever Dream published in 82, a massive improvement in storytelling, playing with themes of horror with all the vampires. You can see a glimmer of Martin's potential here. I just wished I wasn't so turned off by the vampire theme. It took me way longer than it had any reason to to get to the epilogue. For horror fans, I'll link on screen where I discussed this one a while back. That angel looking icon on the bottom left of the sigil represents his three short stories written with his co-author pal Lisa Tuttle. The three short stories were compiled together to sell a proper science fiction novel, but unless I get some recommendations, I probably won't check this out anytime soon, since it's a collaborative effort. And I'm currently loving my nights reading boring old nonfiction, which I never thought I'd say. The last icon on the right with the musical instrument represents his 1983 mystery fantasy novel called The Armageddon Rag. Everything I've heard from this sounds hilariously entertaining. Everything from his decisions to cover artwork to Martin referring to it to his experimental commercial disaster. He claims it almost destroyed his career and I can't wait to get a copy of one. This is where all four sit in chronological order. You can see he was a writing machine in his 30s. So only three solo novels under his belt aside from A Song of Ice and Fire. Aside from all the short stories and novels, Martin has put out a children's book called The Ice Dragon. He calls it a children's book, but trust me, most of you will enjoy it. The themes are heavy and beautiful at the same time. Check this one out years ago in case it had any connection to A Song of Ice and Fire. Spoilers, it doesn't. I heavily recommend this short read. It's such a solid read that it was included in Martin's short story collection, so that's where I'll put it too, instead of categorizing it as a children's book. I think the best way to visually display his work is categorizing them all based on medium. His life's work of short stories are compiled into the collection called Dream Songs, A Retrospective, released in 2003, a few years after A Game of Thrones. Most of us were probably a little too young to experience how this fantasy series hit the book world, but Martin has always been a hotshot award winner, with some New York Times bestsellers attached to his name. Releasing Dream Songs with some obvious A Song of Ice and Fire branding is a testament to that. The copy I own has everything poured into one book. 
32 novellas and a couple scripts thrown in. Because I mean, he did work for Beauty and the Beast and Twilight Zone. Using songs in the titles for his projects is a recurring theme for Martin. A song is a metaphor he commonly uses to mean story. Other short story collections have been put out, one called Songs of Stars and Shadows, another called Songs the Dead Men Sing, and some others, but none of them matter now with dream songs being published. It encapsulates all of them, making the ones from the past obsolete so you don't have to bother with searching them out. Newer copies of dream songs are split into two volumes. The older one is big, red, and chunky. Something similar was done with the fifth book in A Song of Ice and Fire, A Dance of Dragons. Some people have a copy split into two. The Hedge Knight is the only short story in the A Song of Ice and Fire world to be part of Dream Songs. It was the only one written at the time. The Hedge Knight novella has made its rounds, slapped onto an anthology book called Legends in the late 90s and then Dream Songs, and then its own graphic novel, finally packaged into a book Martin called A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms with two other Dunkin' Egg short stories he has got around to over the years. Most Game of Thrones nerds know all about Dunkin' Egg, and it's getting its own spin-off show very soon. It's already in the works at HBO. All this repackaging, while well, great for Martin and his team, confused the hell out of me when first getting into all his work. All the collabs didn't help. If you didn't know better, you would think George Martin has the same work ethic as Stephen King because of all the different titles. The biggest culprit being the Wildcard series. There's 31 of those things with almost as many different writers. The marketing team makes it seem like it's Martin's baby, but he only wrote the prologue of one of them. Literally one prologue chapter. He's actually considered an editor for the entire massive series, despite his name boldly slapped on every new book. It's some more science fiction with their take on the superhero genre, which would normally interest me since I love how Martin puts his twist on oversaturated themes, making it his own. But this is the one case where I haven't heard many good things. Must be lacking some real direction with so many different cooks in the kitchen working on wild cards. Short stories and graphic novels within this superpowered alternate universe. Again, if you have taken on the series, I'm all ears. If some are worth the time, I'm down to hear your reviews. And speaking of time, Marn has slowed down considerably in writing speed, focusing on Game of Thrones spin-offs and supplementary work for the Song of Ice and Fire world. Oh, and there's a lot of those companion books in stores. Had to make a video on that a while back, because they can be a head-scratcher for readers just entering the fandom. A Song of Ice and Fire is by far his most ambitious project. I can't tell you that the couple novels under his belt that I've read are of the same quality, because, well, they're nowhere close. But I highly recommend casually going through Dream Songs, and especially the three Duncan Egg novellas. Hope this guide helped some of you out, because it is very overwhelming. Martin's obviously not done. Just a year and a half ago, a new Song of Ice and Fire companion book was published called The Rise of the Dragon, just in time for all the House of the Dragon hype. It's a repackaged book of fire and blood, with some prettier colored pictures. Even then, Fire and Blood just expanded upon two short stories, and the massive supplementary book, The World of Ice and Fire. Let's not do this again. Click here if you want to hear me talk all about that stuff. Happy reading.